Hi, this is Chad with Excavation and Revelation, the place to turn for excavation strategies and techniques and where proven systems are revealed. We're we looking at building pads. Pads are a great entry level project. Pads come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but are something that pretty much anyone is going to need at some point. You would be doing them for years and it's a good skill to master. We're going to cover the tools needed, uh, the frame line about how long it takes to make a pad, and even toward the end of the video we will go over some costs of making a pad. You want to start out by marking out your corners. It's best at this point to just use spray paint, get them roughly where you want them, so you can start removing the topsoil. It might be tempting to put a pin in at this point, but it's just something you'll be working around. So just roughly mark them in with spray paint, go a little bit beyond where you think your corner is going to be, because by the time you dig out to that corner, you'll be losing your mark. After you've got it roughed in, a good foot or two beyond where the structure is going to go, then you can come back with your pins tape measure, string line, and get it nice and square. You want to pull your corners, pull them diagonal, do some calculating, make sure it's nice and square and uniform. But you always want to make sure that you're working beyond the structure size, beyond the building pad, to have a little bit more support around the edges. Depending what the use of the pad is going to be for, it's going to vary how wide you go, most of the time it's best to go a couple feet, three feet anyways, so you have extra support around your structure and also that the construction crew is going to have some room to work, especially if they're doing a building or something more serious. If you're just doing for a shed, a dog kennel, something small like that, you don't necessarily have to go quite as wide, but it's always good to go wider than you think you're going to need. Start by getting the topsoil out of the way. Just take it nearby, get it piled up. You'll be using some when the project's done to put back around the edges to dress things up and plant grass. But most of it will get hauled out or placed off to the side. You're not going to need it. Some tools you're going to need for building a pad. They kind of vary, but at the simplest forms, you'll need pins, spray paint, string line, laser level, if you don't have a laser level, you can start out even just by getting a string line with a little string bubble that you hang on the string. You can use your level then to uh, in your tape measure to go around and mark your elevations, make sure you have all your low spots filled in, your high spots cut down. A shovel is a good tool to have. A rake, especially when you're spreading the gravel at the end. But other than that, those are just the basic tools nothing too complicated for this it's a good project to start out by doing you can do them with a skid loader, you can do it with a mini excavator, a dozer even a really small one if you're doing a really small shed you can almost essentially do by hand they all work just as well every case might be a little bit different you'll find out as you go what's going to be best for you you can make sure you get all your topsoil stripped. It's never good to build on topsoil. There's just a lot of organic material in there. It's not really solid. You just want to get it out of the way, no matter if you're just putting a gravel pad down. People always seem to want to just throw gravel down, have you level it up, and be good to go. But that could change down the road. They might change their mind, put a, a more serious building on it. They might do more concrete. You just want to make sure you get your topsoil out of the way for peace of mind and just kind of explain to them that it's not meant to go under any material. It's called topsoil. It's meant to go on top for grass. This building pad is going to be for a pavilion. The elevation here is not too critical. We found it best to just take the high spot in the back, back where our, it's being dug out right now by that blue, that blue laser level, cut out your high spot and put it in your low spots. 
Kind of like the Robin Hood principle. Taken from the rich, given to the poor. This material has a lot of rock in it. It's very dry, it drains well, and it makes for a good base for your pad. If this was clay, or muck, or soapstone, or something that's not really suitable to build on, you want to make sure you get all the bad spots cut out, piled up off to the side, and then at that point probably bring in some suitable fill, whether it's shale or actual crushed stone. It can vary. But you always want to try to keep your building structured no matter what it is, if it's a dog kennel, a shed, a carport, building, whatever. You want to get it up higher. You want all the water to shed away from your site, from your structure. It's always better to go high than too low. You want to explain that to the customer too, because they might have this perfect spot in mind, but it might be in a low area. You want to explain to them that it's just going to create headache down the road unless they do a lot of piping, French drains, or downspouts. You want to, it's just easier to stay high, high and dry. Take your machine and keep working it around. Start with your high spots, get them dug out, move them to the low. As you're going back and forth on the pad, you're driving over the material that you're filling in and it's kind of breaking it up and compacting it. When it's done, it's best to have a roller or a vibratory compactor to help compress the material, get all the air out, make sure it's nice and tamped in and solid. But as you're doing your grading, your cut and fill, you want to be traveling over the material as much as possible to be breaking it up and compacting it in along the way. There are some bigger rocks in this project. The more that they are broken up, the easier they are, are going to be to get graded around and the better it's going to work out for you. Work the material out to a little bit wider than what the building is going to be, the structure size. That way it's got nice support around the edges. You can always kind of trim this up once the building's up and uh, see how it's going to work out. But always go a little bit beyond your structure. You want to put a little bit of pitch too as you're doing this. You want the water to shed away. You don't want any puddles forming. I'm talking just a few inches. This pad, for example, it's going to be about 30 feet long, 15 feet wide. Three or four inches of fall across it is all you're going to need on the, the 15 foot end just to get that water shedding off. Doesn't have to be anything critical. You just want be a nice area for the contractor when he comes to do his work. Keep in mind when the footers are going to be dug, whether they're being augered or actually dug, you're going to have some extra material. You can then kind of use that to fin around in any spots that might need some extra attention. But the pad will essentially be get tore up once that part takes place. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfect at this point, but just get it knocked around, do the best you can during this time. Go back and forth to different angles, cutting and filling, pushing and dragging it back to get it worked around in, in place, nice and smooth, nice and level. A pad this size with this material where you're cutting out 12 to 18 inches and you're just filling it in should take around three hours, especially with the machine this size. You can use that as a base point to start out for your charging. If it's your very first pad, maybe give yourself a little bit more cushion, factor on a little bit longer, but you can say around three hours, you can knock out a pad at this level pretty easily. 75 to $95 is a decent hourly rate to charge with a machine like this. This is going to vary depending on where you live, what the cost of living are, and what your machine payments are or advertising your overhead. But I would say that will give you a ballpark for an average price to charge. You want to make sure you're factoring in the time it took to estimate this job because that's your time as well. Also, the time it took to haul the machine there and haul it back, you want to be factoring all that in to your cost and to your estimate. And then if you're doing the footers, 
whether you're augering them or digging them, great. That's an additional cost. And spreading the gravel as well is going to be an extra cost. So those things are maybe taking a few more hours as well. If you're just putting gravel down, just throw a simple barrier protector, some fabric down to help keep the weeds from growing up. It also keeps the gravel separate from the material, keep it nice and orderly. Rake it around, get it compacted with your roller. Leave a nice solid finish for them. Then take your extra topsoil, work it around the edges. If it's in your bid to plant it for grass, go ahead and do that this time. Make it nice and presentable for them. Make sure that they're happy with everything. If I missed anything in this video, feel free to leave a comment. If anything I went over too fast and you went and covered it more in depth, please let me know. I'm happy to help. I hope this makes sense. I hope you guys can go out and start building pads now and uh, start satisfying customers. Thanks for watching, guys.